uh, and often with uh, powder. So the surfaces uh, are the juxtaposition. And the scale is also minor 16 by 20, and Marsha's are 12 by 12. And those, uh, she has always uh, mostly worked in a square, and my work is almost always a rectangle, a vertical rectangle. Although my, my um, uh, crop field rotations are always horizontal because they're, they're an expression of walking down, looking at the road when you walk down the road. When I walk now, I have to walk, I have to look at the ground all the time. So I really look at the ground, and that's what those are. Um, so anyway, that's how the project juxtaposition came about. And uh, so the um, Presenting two different approaches side by side in a way that would push us both. That's what we had in mind. Um, so that the work would challenge both of us and it would uh, be appropriate to both of us. That is hers, appropriate to her work and mine to mine. Um, and the actual definition of juxtaposition um, is the fact of two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. That's what the dictionary calls juxtaposition. And I actually first learned to like that word a lot, um, listening to uh, Loneliest Monk and uh, the jazz uh, people uh, in the 60s uh, often talked about uh, juxtaposition. So, um, so I had a real good response to that term. And um, what we hope is that uh, the whole result of each one is greater than the two parts. Because we regard each set as a whole piece. Each set is the conversation. Also, uh, 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 we always talk about aesthetics. Uh, that's a, always a great part of our dialogue. Um, we are really fortunate to be able to have an artist to live with and to carry on conversation and explore your ideas and, um, and work together. So that's just a very great thing. Um, so I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about <coughs> what, I, what I do here. Can I pop in here? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, what do I want to say? Oh. Well, somebody did a great article about our opening, in which she said um, that um, from Tolstoy and Anna Karenina, if every family experiences tragedy in a, in, in a different way, and we really <coughs> did, I experienced this. Although we, not on wood, have been very lucky that we've not lost anybody particularly close to us, but. Uh, when we started, um, I'm going to tell you something that you don't want me to say, but I'm going to say, is one of the incentives for this was project was um, probably in February or January, all of a sudden we were reminded that we had a show up here. And so that was part of the incentive. <laughs> you know what? But it is. And, um, and one thing I want to talk about when I talk, because it's really my time, is that often you do things without really uh, knowing uh, the reason that you're doing it, without really understanding, and particularly I think that's true in my painting, maybe, way, that. Um, um, it says it speaks to you sometimes a long time after, or as soon as you finish. Uh, for me, I can't pre pre think it very much, and uh, so this was a great. Um, we got the spark out of need <laughs> because we love to show here, and we remember that we were going to, 
And also, I think it was an effort when Hazel talks about aesthetics to show uh, that beauty <coughs> can exist and that we can make beautiful things in a beautiful life in the midst of COVID. And um, in the midst of an ugly world. So, those are just things that. <laughs> well, I have you don't of, need your notes. One of the reasons that um, <laughs> that um, I'm not particularly fond of the that uh, being the energy behind the show is because I'm always working in the studio. If I don't work in the studio, I really don't feel grounded, and I don't feel myself. And so I will always have something. But it is true that because Marsha was not painting at the time, that we had to both consider what would happen here in July. So that is true. <laughs> so um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about my goals for this and how it happened. Um, so I, what I knew that I needed to do See I, see, I did a big project that took three years, and I finished it in October of 2020. So um, it's, um, the project is <clears throat> 18 trees um, that are about four by six feet, and, um, and they are intended to be a forest, to be hung in a circle, so that you're standing in a forest. And I had worked on that for three years, and um, and uh, if, if you if you see the matriarch book, there are five or six in that, that book. And I had just finished the, the last one in October 2020. <laughs> and so every time you uh, every time I am uh, finished with a, a big concept like that, I'm a little bit lost for what to do next, and uh, and also. Um, just completely, you want to be completely blank, sort of, in terms of um, uh, having a vision for the next project or the next next work you would do, and that's why drawing all the time is very helpful. Um, but I wasn't dating either until I think it was February, or January, maybe. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what would be, what would keep, I knew I had to paint, but, um, but what would I paint because I was so distraught about the COVID going on in the world and all the people and all the news and, and January 6th and so on and on. So I knew I had to have something that would just keep me totally occupied mentally. And um, so what I did was, these were my goals. Uh, one, my goal was to keep my sanity. <laughs> and um, the first part of that was um, something, I had to do something that would demand my complete attention. Some strict observation. So that is all that I could do. So it had to be something new. And I thought about still life because um, that's traditionally something that you observe carefully, but it's also something that I had never done. I, I might have done one still life at the end of the 50s or the beginning of the 60s, and I think that still life is in the book. <laughs> um, so, so I decided to do it. And then um, another thing was, I was trained in the veggies by a classical painter and um, in the classical method. And I haven't used that or painted in that way, except once in a while when I would insert it into a painting that I had been doing since almost 60 years. So, so I decided that I would adhere to that. And um, still life as a subject really uh, come, the, the, the subject are the objects, objects that you love are the very best thing. And, um, and oh, perhaps that you live with all the time. And for me, that was a collection of hand blown glass vases that Marcia and I had in our house. They were always sitting on a shelf. And um, so I, that's what I decided. 
the, um, the format 16 by 20 is the traditional uh, format for studying formal portraiture or the study of the head. And um, so the portrait size, and, and it occurred to me in looking at the bases, that the bases are all about portrait size. So, um, so when you're trained that way, you, um, you work to scale. So you try to, to make the image on a two-dimensional plane as the same scale as you're seeing it. So, so all the bases are to scale. Um, a couple of them are even measured so that, um, so that I knew they were exact. I mean, the, this black, sorry, the black <laughs> one, <laughs> that, that's measured exactly to be the size. Yeah, but but they, they mostly are close. So, um, and then there, I have a couple of historical references which I like uh, to point out. Um, one of them is um, this, uh, no, not that one. Oh, it's up here. It's the first one in this line of four. And that is, that, oh, that was one of the first, and it was inspired by, I was looking through our art books to see some uh, still lives. And, um, and there aren't many that we have on the shelf, but we had a rich shoulder book. And he had one pot of flowers in there, and and that really inspired me. And I think the way that I painted the bottom of that vase is very fresh shoulder line. So, and then the other one is the one right behind me. It's uh, sort of orange, the orange flowers. But I was so I wanted to paint that painting so uh, much, and. We didn't have any flowers. I mean, this was February, March, <laughs> and um, uh, so I looked through. Uh, uh, we have a big, with the whole collection of the uh, Minneapolis Institute of Art, and there was a base by of flowers by Rebuild. So. Those are the Hill's flowers. It's my base. But so what I really loved was um, I have two of my friends who are painters. Uh, they, they came to the studio to see our project. And they walked right in and they walked right up to that painting and said, Oh, we don't. <laughs> so I love that. And uh, also, that art historian who wrote the book, the parent book, she was very pleased to see how. Because art comes, art comes from art. It doesn't just materialize out of the air. And um, so she liked that very much too. Um, so um, the other thing I did was, uh, now I don't think I did this until after we had our conversation that brought us up to this project. Because, but I. I, uh, for every painting I did, I documented the palette. So in our, because every experiment has to have a control. So our two controls were um, the palette, whatever palette I used for uh, my still life, she took the palette and used it for her abstract, abstraction of it. So, so that, and the, and the other one was oil. Yeah, we both work with oil paint. So that's, um, yes, that's all the notes that I made. That <laughs> it sort of brings out, the other thing is, I really like the idea, and uh, Marsha is less concerned about this, um, because we've talked about it, but I like the idea that I know artists who made the glass vases. And uh, there's um, this first one over here that is a cylinder by Dale Chihuly. Um, mm -hmm. And um, the, yeah, it's over here. It's over there. The first. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one that um, Dominic Lavino was a glass blower <laughs> in the 40s and 50s from uh, Ohio. It's a very 
later in that material as a modern material. Uh, Dominic Levino and that green vase. Uh, the second one in, yeah, that's Dominic Levino. And, uh, and, and a lot of these vases are from a young, uh, well, he's not so young now. <laughs> he was one of my students many years ago. Peter Sell, and he has a workshop uh, at a glass foundry in Minneapolis, and, uh, and he has a great website to go with Peter, Z-E-L-L-E is his last name. And uh, so it's like the yellow one is his, and, uh, and the rainbow one is his. And then there's one other one, Tom Patton, is the pale blue things over there. And he is actually a potter from Wisconsin, but he did blow some glass, and I like that one very much. So, um, so one other thing about the vases, um, I didn't, I, I very rarely, I have never really kept cobalt blue in my paint supply because I like mixing, and cobalt blue is a blue that is so hard to mix, you have to just know it for itself. And um, so, but, but that blue vase, the second one over there, that's the Peter Bell itself, and it's cobalt glass. So I really, I had to go and get cobalt blue to paint that. Um, but all the, all the rest of the paint. <coughs> oh, one more thing about this one, these two vases, we, we went to Peter Zell's sale one time, and we both liked, we each liked one of those, and we couldn't decide, so we bought them both. <laughs> and uh, they've always both been sitting side by side on the top shelf in our kitchen. And so many people have been in our house and asked me, Is, are those are those you too? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and what's the title of? The title of that is Us. <laughs> So I'm going to pass this over to Marcia. She's going to um, Thanks, Ace. Uh, for me, this project was really good because it brought me back to painting, which I hadn't done for three years, maybe four. You know, you you lose um, yes, you 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 lose your momentum and such. And I had a couple of broken hands during that time, mm -hmm. and and uh, so when the COVID hit. Uh, I just um, submerged myself in literature and uh, read and read and read and had no, I looked at our studio as if it was a den of rattlesnakes and I didn't even want to go near it. I, and I felt badly that I couldn't do it, uh, couldn't paint, but that was it. But um, it came out, like I say, out of isolation and um, for so long, and maybe I served my my need to escape reality in, in the way I did and read some good books and such. But when we realized we did need to come up with something, and when we hit on uh, on Hazel doing still lives for her sanity, well, immediately mm -hmm. I, I thought I would love to make abstractions from those. Mm -hmm. And um, we have talked in the, a little bit about, you know, the, um, the bottom of the vases kind of are grounding. They're, you know, on ground. And, um, and my 12-inch um, uh, square um, you don't know, as uh, as Mary Lou Fellows wrote the other day, you don't know necessarily which is up or down or back and forth, and I don't know when I'm painting them. And that sort of lets, um, lets energy in or opens things up a bit. And is that right? No. Okay. And, uh, uh, and you came up with the idea that, that yours were kind of the, the trunk of the tree, and mine are more the branches. They go any which way, or leaves, or such. And uh, I think that's that's interesting. Uh, my interest in, is in abstract, is in abstract art, actually. 
Uh, and I guess I've always done abstractions, although I haven't thought I was. I did a lot of sky water color studies and that, and, and then my um, hiking trail glazes, uh, uh, a series showing, showing that. But uh, what, uh, what I really like about abstraction <laughs> is the color. That's, that's really what excites me and gets me to painting. Um, I add texture and shape, different shapes, uh, and not being held down to any anything, not having a reference that I needed to try to uh, uh, convey. And um, and I like I I always was a, a palette knife painter until recently. I with these I've done both brush, but mainly palette knife, uh, uh, and. Um, so the color and the form, I think, are energizing. They are energizing to me. And that gave me energy to do this. Uh, the content, uh, Hazel and I were talking a bit about it today. Sometimes when I paint, I, you talk about form and content or meaning of the work. And I, you know the meaning of your work. I think in contact more readily than I do when you have it often in your mind, right? <laughs> and, and I'm not sure what I have done. What what's the content in it? What's the meaning until I see it? Till I finish. And uh, so I like to, uh, yeah. Well, so I, I'm interested. And, and I think we discovered, and oftentimes, maybe a year or two later sometimes, I discover the content of a body of work of mine or a piece of work of mine. And today, it dawned on us that's part of the content in this show, particularly Hazel's, I think, but mine as well, is honoring. It's like a bouquet. It's like a flowers delivered at the hospital, all those people that have died in this time. And, and so in a way, it's an homage. And, and it's, a, it's a, a eulogy. And, and it's a, uh, a sad song, in a way. And, and when I think about that, I, I think, too, that a lot, Hazel kept saying when I would do things, well, that's so funny, or your humor is there. And that's exactly uh, what I would do, you know, if, if I had been able to visit somebody, you know, and, uh, and bring them great flowers and try to pick them up, you know? To, and so anyway, I think there's, there's that. Uh, um, try to pick up the spirits of the people. Yeah. Um, I also think that abstractions are different ways of knowing and seeing, and um, and as are your still lives. Each of us, if you really study or live with a painting or you know look at it enough, it, it has various meanings to different people at different times and to us. So um, yeah. So what do I want to say? Uh, a lot come, a lot of this, a lot of this work comes out of emotion. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of it, I think, is uh, concern, uh, seriousness. Um, yeah, and kind of flowers uh, for the world, and uh, an expression of the complexities in the world now. You know, there's beauty and such. But I think what excites us most, or me, and I think us both, is when we saw this uh, show hum, and uh, we walked in, we both thought, yes, we love it. And uh, we realized uh, that beauty can come out of hard, hard, hard times. So anyway, uh, I look at, at my abstractions as a, 
uh, Hazel's work is the formal language, mm -hmm. and my abstractions are uh, a kind of another another language, or I express myself in color and, and shapes and kind of rhythms. So, um, yes. Uh, Marcia talked about my talking about the uh, vertical as a tree. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and what I meant about that is that the mine on the bottom are larger and heavier, and they indicate um, um, a relationship to um, uh, the ground. And um, and and hers are above that, and, and in a strong vertical hanging, the one on top is the spiritual aspect of it. That's what I was really. And um, so sometimes I think about my spiritual paintings like that because they have a stem and then they, they reach up and they have a, a very high top to them, which is the spiritual aspect of them. So it's kind of like um, the chakras when you get to the eighth chakra, the top of the head, it is the spiritual chakra. So that's kind of why it was talking about in terms of the energies of this kind of composition and, um, and work. So the other thing, uh, Marcia mentioned the hanging, and <clears throat> I really want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Brian and Roxanne, and Roxanne's here. Um, but Brian said, because they hung it for us. And this is the third show they come for us here. We really appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, um, I think um, if you have if you have a a will to do it, uh, I would uh, suggest that you kind of take one or two that appeal to you, or and look um, at uh, what you see in the still life, um, how I've treated it in the abstract. And some you see different shapes or what always color, but um, yeah, kind of like like in the far uh, your far left at the end of this wall, um, it was I don't know where that came from except I didn't know what to do with that large orange vase, and so I kind of. Like, Exploded it out or, or something, and then some we call this the green the green worm. I'm not sure where that came from, but and I think there's books in there. And uh, so anyway, sometimes you'll see a line or or um, something suggested. And uh, I was going to say something about content. Yeah, uh, because uh, content to me is. Um, the way I work is I'm not a realist, and um, <clears throat> but I've always kind of thought about myself as uh, working from a symbol, the symbol of something, rather than the um, uh, lifelike uh, exact uh, image of it, not like a photograph, but but um, but as a symbol. For I've always um, seen the tree as a symbol, and I also think about what it means and um, how it relates to nature. All the things that I, I think of in my mind um, um, so I, and I think that these still lives are like that too because uh, they are not uh, what I would call high realism. They are Frankly, I'm not sure there's anything exactly like that in our, all the terms used for centuries. Um, uh, but if, if they are more symbolic of what I would see. So does that make sense? I mean, um, yes, the, one thing I thought would be a really fun thing to do would be for, for you all to just look at the, at the uh, considering them, the pair is the work, and um, and see which work you really like the, the most, 
and why and tell us because that would be so great for us mm -hmm. if you could do that. So, Marsha, I'm going to hand this back to you. Thank you. What? <laughs> oh, well, do you want to have questions? Yes. At first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions regarding sequencing. So, obviously, Hazelwood, you would paint your painting first. But then, Marsha, did you wait until hers was done before you started? And then, Hazel, did you start the next one while she would, you know, I, I'm curious as to how that worked, but also, question about sequencing in the during this process did you find your interest increased or waned or went up or, you know to, to carry it forward to all of these how did that work for you well hazel had uh, begun her project for maintaining her sanity <laughs> and i was still reading and i came in one day and it, it's the ray dome piece and I said, okay, I'll give it a go. And I thought it was, I said, see, it won't work. <laughs> and, and after I hung there for maybe three, four weeks, Hazel said, that's really a good painting. And so I, uh, by that time, she painted three or maybe three ahead. And uh, so mostly uh, we went at our own speed and uh, I would choose when when she had you know eight or nine I would choose which I wanted to do next and then which one I wanted to do next. We have a big studio so um, and, and all my big paintings were gone and so I could hang them up as I went and then she could just come in. So how did you match the palettes and if you're doing Oh, well, what we mean when we say match the palettes is we use the same uh, tubes, of paint. tubes of paint. I mean, uh, our own tubes, but the same color, the same brand of, of paint. And then most of the paint is mixed on the palette table. So table Hazel would have mixed her own yeah. when she did hers, and then you had to come up with... Well, well, then I used her palette, her basic colors, and would decide which I wanted to use more than another, or how I might make some different. And so, so we and we don't hang them in sequence. There's no sequence here, uh, uh, according to when we finished or what order we did. Them. There was maybe. Uh, are you going to say more about this or? Okay. <laughs> well, there was a second question about did your interest oh it, it, you know was grow or grow or, 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 or did it go up? And it, I'm curious about that. Mine increased. I got more excited the longer I went, and we want to keep going. And I honestly, I got so involved in seeing this whole act of seeing. That I even so I dreamt about it. I couldn't wait to get down to the studio uh, to see what I had done the night, the day before, and um, I was just completely um, absorbed with it. Um, I, I think that by the time we got to, we had we did one more this one the, the trip day. We did that up here after we came up here. And uh, that's where the bases were. And we did it because I think we just both wanted to keep painting. And so what would you do? You just paint what you're painting. And, uh, um, and I, actually, I like that piece very much. Um, so I was thoroughly invested in it all the time. And I don't know if I would continue uh, blazing right now on the studio wall. I have seven small paintings, about by 14, of uh, spirit trees that I'm painting in this manner. But um, it, see, I like to move the paint around. And this is a tighter way of working. And uh, I actually think that the way I've handled that technique. It's pretty loose compared to what it's supposed to be. 
So, but I like more action with the brush. And, uh, and, okay, and the other thing is, I have a habit of um, writing down my palette on the side. I'm working on a big canvas, um, and the, the canvas is tacked on the wall, and, uh, and it's measured so the side of the frame is going to be a stretcher that it'll be. And on that edge of the canvas, I have a habit of writing down all the colors that I have used in that piece. I don't know why I like that. I think I, um, just, I'm automatically a recorder. Uh, and, uh, or a historian or something. But I really like doing that. So it was automatic for me to make out a card. I had a bunch of little cards in there. We had a big studio in the city. And uh, Marsh has one end and I have the other. And um, in, in my work table, I had a bunch of cards. So I just write them. Yes. Um, I'm drawn to the yellow one on your far left there. Yeah. I, I just love the kind of the cluster of yellow flowers. But my question for Marsha, I guess, is your abstract, to me, seems different than any of the other ones. It's more it is. like it's a collection of things. They're yes. somewhat more separate. Could you talk about that? Yeah, I think. Um, what I think is, at this time, when I got here, I thought, what can I do? How could I, you know, it's so full and rich and that. But it was the base, that, and then I wanted to, um, you know, move uh, a geometric form into to it. And uh, then this, that kind of became like a cable car or something, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Or a harmonica. What? Or a harmonica. <laughs> yeah. Harmonica, exactly. And uh, I had fun. I had more fun. And what I did also with this is pay a lot of attention to how I did the paint, like this this line and that. And so, uh, yeah, you, you just don't know uh, kind of what to do, and then you, yeah. But Marcia, you did edit that after you made the initial. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, well, we call it, you know, when you uh, look, oh, yeah. look at a composition and you want to change it, we start calling that editing because it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one, by the time I got here, I thought, I'm a little tired of roses. <laughs> <laughs> So what's different about this? And I thought, well, this. So then I just kind of went uh, different. It, it was fun. Yeah, how I got the, the fresh flowers, because Marcia's daughter, Katie, did all of our grocery shopping. And she would go to Costco, and Costco always has this big, big area of fresh flowers. Roses so, a lot. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. but other other uh, bouquets too. And then sometimes I would get a bouquet and, and I could make it last and I would rearrange it. So um, oh, yeah. so the blue um, that the blue base, <coughs> cobalt blue base is a rearrangement of the bouquet on the far right. Oh, okay. <laughs> And, oh, and by the way, oh, I talk about the amaryllis. Oh, I will. But I love above the blue face. That's one of my favorite pieces of watchers. Because years ago, when she was at MCAT, and um, she did, uh, she was a photographer to begin with, and did this amazing series of photographs about her mother, and they were about uh, they they were photographs of objects that her mother had had, and she called them photographs largesse, mm. which is, I love that word, largesse, and uh, so that painting of hers, to me, is largesse. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is so fun because it's how it's how your life evolves around your art or your art evolves around your life. Um, um, my birthday, my birthday is um, a week before Christmas, and um, and Len and Bob sent me um, white amar a white amaryllis for my birthday, but it was still uh, the shoot coming out of the ball, so it, it hadn't bloomed yet, and um, I mean it hadn't grown, grown that much yet. Uh, but but the, that's where the white amaryllis comes from. It was always sitting on our kitchen table. And then next to that, Carol Brunel is a friend of ours who lives across the street. And she gave us this um, red uh, ball, a, a ball that is coated in red wax. And that was also on the kitchen table. And it started to grow. And it was a red amaryllis. So, yeah. It was just great. It was, it was like, and so it started a week before Christmas and then it lasted until up until March. Yeah. Yeah. So, so which one was your first one? The first one. The first one I did was the old roses. Oh, okay. And I had a really tough time. This with one? That. Yeah. And I didn't, um, well, for one thing, it was the most obvious vase because it's always on our. In, above our fireplace in our living sitting room. And, um, and I had had a yellow, I had, I had a dozen or two dozen yellow roses from Costco. But when I first did that piece, the roses were so articulated that the whole piece was stiff and I didn't like it. Marcia didn't like it. And I just kept working at it, working at it, coming back to it. Now, one of the things about this way of working, the glazing, the classical way, you can't do it. It's not all in one shot. You just can't do it that way. You don't have to work up. In a way, it causes something different to happen. It's like um, you live with something and live with it until you begin to know it better. And um, I think that's, that's what that process does. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, gradually I kept working on the roses, and it was a, I, I had done a series of um, rose gardens from the rose garden in town. Um, the, the women in town have a rose garden, it's always beautiful. And I used to stop there and draw all the time when I had to go back to teach. And um, so I've got many paintings called the, the rose garden. And so I thought about that. One that I like, I think is probably the most successful of all those paintings. And I tried to do that with the yellow roses. Sort of like I wiped them off and I redid them and I kept doing that until I got something that I could accept. It's hard work. <laughs> yeah. But that you can do that with oil. Yeah. And, and you can do it with oil and still have a, um, a glazed surface. Um, you, you can't do that with acrylic because you can't move around that much. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Other, anybody else have one you'd like to talk about, ask about? That's it. Well, I, I was struck when I first saw these. I, I came a couple of times today. Oh, and um, <clears throat> by, and I know you had told me, you know, how classical your feel most like your approach to these. But they, you know, for all that, I think they kind of float. You know, they're not really, I mean, you know, the, like the, the like rigid observation, I would think, you know, locks them to the tabletop or something in the shadows or the, you know, there's, but I think you've got this, like, yeah, light-hearted thing, you know, like that blue, like hovering flying oh, saucer there that holds the yellow tulips. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's a, some horizon lines, so yes, that is on the table. Yeah, that's a table. You know, that yeah, that everyone's bud is just like, 
And I, I just find that really interesting. You know, so I think they're, you know. They're more than traditional still yeah. works. They're really yeah. elegant. Yeah, they're, they're really, you know, you're one who thought about the, you know, these, uh, the eulogy that the end of the concert that goes out into, you know, the, the, the times, the, the heartbreak of the times that these are expressing. I think this is so amazing. And I think that, you know, the marshes, because they are expressive, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're, 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 they're um, learns about something wrong to any visual mm -hmm. framework, you know, that we, you know, want to birth with. Um, I, I just think it's very, it's very light. It's really beautiful. Thank you. It's great. It's yeah. Well, for such a time that was serious and so many people have lost oh, lost oh terrible and it's writing is still here we don't know what's going to happen well, but these are not filled with breath there's more hope and comfort in this i think um yes that's part and of the juxtaposition isn't it yes. i mean that whole yes juxtaposed to yes and you started out by saying something like that at the very yeah. beginning yeah. Uh, in in tragedy, in difficult things, there is always the flip side to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Good. So these are the flip side of what was happening. I think. Yeah. I think Marsha pointed that out too. Um, yeah. That's good. Yes. Yeah. So, were there any that? When you started working on them, they didn't work, and you scrapped them and started over, like so many of us do. <laughs> um, no, actually, when that happens to me in this process, you can wipe the whole thing off and use the canvas and start again. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> some, sometimes even that, that canvas doesn't work, and you have to start from scratch again. Yeah. So I like wiping off the canvas because it gives you something there, it's ground that you can look on. But um, another thing that I, uh, when I started working on these, I discovered at Wet Paint, this was before we were, I had it in the studio before we were quarantined. Two or three tubes of this, um, it's called, oh, what is that? It's it's a it's an underpainting. Uh, it's a and it's a, like a pale, it's earthy green, and it is the traditional underpainting of some classical works, like back to the back to the seventeen hundreds. Would say. Um, so they have that paint now. I had never seen it before. And so we, I had gotten it out of curiosity, but it's wonderful. We use that. Like on the second one in on this wall that, that we should point the, the, the wall behind us, and some here, some here. It's always mixed with something else. We, all but it's a ground to, that you can work on. It's sort of neutral. and. Um, <clears throat> And you can, any color you put on it, you can move that underpainting color in that direction, whether it's blue or. Um, so, so I think that this second painting here, the one with the libido vase, the pale one, that's about the field on that is about the color of what I'm talking about. It's probably that original underpainting color. Did you say the name of it? I missed the name of it. The oh. color. Hi. Hi. Oh. I missed the name of the color. I, I, I don't remember the exact name of it, but it's an underpainting. Um, it was made by a company. I really, I don't know. It's a European company. But I can find it out for you. 
Um, was this your very first collaboration, and will it be your last? <laughs> well, we have raised uh, some pretty nice dogs and cats. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but yes, it's the first time that it is. Well, when we travel, we do, some of you have heard this, we, when, when we used to travel before today, times. Uh, we would always take what we called uh, a studio and a backpack. And it was gouache paints and good paper, heavy paper. And we would often paint the same uh, from the same place. But, uh, uh, and in the book there are some examples yes. of, um, of our both using the same subject matter. But it wasn't kind of a collaboration. And yes, we want to figure out how to do it again. I think it saved our marriage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it, it, it was energizing. It was energizing to us. And beauty is, you know. And hazels are beautiful. You know, all these are beautiful. Are beautiful. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> I don't know if I'll use this uh, method again, but um, all the time we talk about what can we do with this idea, and um, I'm sure that we'll do something with it uh, in terms of uh, uh, the idea of juxtaposition one to another. Um, when, when I look through our travel, Paintings. Um, it's very interesting to look at uh, if she painted a tree and I painted a tree, how they look. And um, I don't know. I think we'll work it we'll out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, it has to have meaning, and, and uh, art has to have meaning, I think. It has meaning. And like I say, you sometimes don't know what it is. Uh, when you're doing it, but you know it's, it's meaningful. And I think this is a meaningful project. It means a lot about beauty and aesthetics and collaboration and honoring uh, honoring all the pain that we still are in and uh, trying to make beauty in the midst of that. So today we were talking about um, abstraction, and um, and I I have this great series of book, uh, magazines there, magazines eight that were uh, published by the artists in New York in the fifties and um, <clears throat> late forties and fifties, and there was in that abstract expressionist movement. There was a, there were a group of artists who called themselves or were named the club, and they uh, came up with the idea. They were the first magazine I think ever done, totally by artists. They were um, written. Everything was written by the artists. It was illustrated by the artists, and they were published by the artists. And there are uh, manifestos in those magazines, and the name of the magazine is what uh, I, I, keep, I hold on to. It is called, the, the magazine is called It Is. And that is a term that those artists uh, came to because in an abstract painting, people just stand in front of it and say, well, what is it? And the response is, it is. And that is the subject. Uh, the subject is the painting itself. And um, so it was, a, it was a wonderful time uh, in New York, for that group of artists. And, and what they did was a certain kind of freedom that it gave uh, freedom from um, having, having to adhere to a figurative image and uh, a freedom. And they did think of their work, at, at least most of the early ones, 
as being really spiritual. Um, Chicago Art Institute had a show uh, about the spirit. Uh, and, and it was those artists. Anyway, I like to look at the little the abstractions here and the ones on the back. I love the uh, paintings back there, those four paintings on that wall in the corner of marshes. And I, I think of it as they are. expression. They are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is. <laughs> so I'm just, um, I think I mentioned a little bit about the big the diptychs. Um, I have painted several paintings over the years of Croft Hill Road, where we walk. And um, we always refer to that as Grand Rays of the Broad Shot. And um, so recently, I dropped with my walker, and um, and I have to I have to look down all the time, so I'm always looking at the ground, and all along the edge where the road meets the uh, nature at the edge of the road is interests me, and so that's what those paintings are about, and they're titled Crop Hill Road in October is this one. The one on the far wall in the front is Crop Hill Road August. And the um, and the one that's on the back of this wall, the green one, is Crop Hill Road April. And uh, we were up here this year the on of April and, uh, and that's when I did that. So there's there's just no time to get bored. <laughs> There's so much to do. I like Betsy. I came to visit several times to look at um, a set that would be more thoughtful about just one set at a time. But I was struck, particularly, I love the Croco ones, but I was struck when I came in and I saw this collection and I thought, during this COVID period of time, it required a lot of isolates of time and confinement. I mean, I love the nesting aspect, and I love to be quiet. I love the introspection, but we have an excessive amount of <laughs> containment. <laughs> and you were able to blast through that and collaborate in a way. I mean, I can imagine you in the dead of winter or in those times where you we might have been able to search for a few Costco flowers, but for the most part, you were contained. But you produced such beauty, and I want to thank you. Okay, well, there's uh, beverages and uh, talk, and we're, we're around. So thank you all for coming.